Hello and welcome to the Strixhaven School of Magic pre-pre-release bonus rounds. We had so much fun playing with our pre-release kits that we wanted to play more magic. So I hope you enjoy Graham versus Nelson. Uh, we rolled some yeah. die. Graham won. And friends, let's let's battle. Let's do this. Awesome. Silver Quill versus what did you open again? So Prismari? I have a Prismari kit, but I'm playing a Quandrix deck. All right. Well, we're, uh, we're I'm going to start detecting. with the Silver Quill Campus and pass the turn. Changing our major mid-college uh, mid career, I guess. Quandrix it Campus. Happens. Back to you. Absolutely, yeah. it does. All right. Yeah. General uh, Studies. I'm going to play a Plains and this rather unexciting Ageless Guardian. It is a 1-4 Spirit Soldier. That's Vanilla? it. Vanilla, okay. just a 1-4 for two. All right. That Go booty, ahead. though. Yeah. Yeah. The plan was block a lot. <laughs> in in the actual PPR, there was, it was a much more aggressive uh, early game than I had thought the deck was going to do. <laughs> this is what I thought it was going to do. But anyway, here we are. Back to you, sir. I've got another campus. So we're representing the Quandrix. We're representing the Prismari. We're we're showing up to and signing up for a lot of classes. We're probably Strixhaven's favorite student over here. Just just pay for courses. Probably. All right. Well, I've got a mountain, and I'm going to attack you for one. It hurts me. Yeah. Go ahead. Look, Nelson. Nobody you really feel like you to pick your major in your first year. Yeah. You really feel like the Ageless Guardian should have vigilance. Mm. Mm. Like the this one four for two. You feel like it's a just sort of like it chips in, but it blocks and everything. No, it's just it just sits there. All right. I'm going to pledge allegiance to Quandrix oh, no. here with the Quandrix Pledge Mage. 2-2 two, two for three Merfolk Druid grows whenever I cast or copy a spell. Back to you. I'm that card is that card gets out of hand in a really, really big hurry. And I nice have to see done an on amazing three, job. Yeah. yeah. And I've done an amazing job of uh drawing lots of land this game. So that's fun. Uh pass. Um, I would also like to cast a Master Symmetrist. This is a 4-4 four, for four, 4 Rhino Druid with Reach. Oh boy. And whenever a creature I control with power equal to its toughness attacks, that creature gains Trample until end of turn. All right. Back to you. That card put in some work at every game I've seen. What a powerful uncommon. I'm a fan. Uh, that is a Plains and a Turn Passed Back. Hmm, this is quite a lot of land for you there, Graham. <laughs> yeah. Not a ton of spells. Okay, okay. I'll play an island, and I will attack with both my creatures. I Actually, I'm sorry. Okay, before combat. Pr yeah. Before combat, I would like to uh, give those creatures a study break and hmm. tap them. They... And then I learn. They can break. Hopefully, for now, that's fine. All right, great. Um, just my, a little study break. Yeah, just a little study break from the lesson plan over here. I'm going to pull in. Um, I don't know which of these I actually want. Probably just Inkling Summoning. So that's what I'm going to go looking for. Seems Put that fine. in hand. And I almost untapped, but no, it's your second main. <laughs> That's okay. You can you can untap. All right. Holy moly! Uh, swamp. I'm gonna cast that inkling summoning and get. I think I have a foil one around here somewhere. I do. Get a foil inkling token. The flex. And that. That's my turn. Go ahead. I'd like to have a heated debate with your inkling token. Oh, I no. I have a magecraft trigger. This is end step? Yeah, you sure do. Yeah, end step if that's okay. Yep. So it's four damage. I mean, not for the inkling. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's certainly the end step for the, the inkling. That inkling's mm -hmm. last step ever. Okay, I'll end up. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. Very well. These these sorceries, uh, or these lessons rather, uh, you bring them into the game. So once you cast them, they they do 
sit in your graveyard until yeah. the game is out is over right okay yeah that's right i have nothing that takes it out of the graveyard but i was like oh, i should just put this back in my box so i don't forget but technically it's in the graveyard yeah it's it might... in this game for the duration yeah, yeah. of the entire game so if you could mm -hmm. recover it from the graveyard it's it's a card that's in play now and will be right. treated the same as any other card for the rest of it or, or i might care that it's in your graveyard in case yeah. i have something that like needs to target two cards in your graveyard or something like that yeah yeah exactly okay i'll play a mountain mm -hmm. and I'll go back to combat if that's okay. Are we are we still studying yeah. or okay? Time no, to get some learning done. We're gonna we're gonna write some tests. Oh no! All right. Well, I can see this going very badly, but I'm going to. So actually, uh, first of all, invisible so, trigger. Yeah, there you go. My creature yeah. have trample. Yeah. I was gonna say both of them have trample, right? Because they're yeah. both equal power and toughness. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. One of them is a three three currently. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna attempt to block the Quandrix Pledge Mage, and uh, we'll see if my Ageless Guardian survives combat. Um, I'm happy to pass priority here. All right. I have no further effects. Take four. So I take four. Right? Yep. Cool. Okay, second main. I'll cast Cogwork yeah. Archivist. This Ooh, is boy. a robot. A four or five artifact creature construct with reach, again, and an ability that says tap and pay to put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Four That's or five good. with reach is... Uh... That's a big body. I like that the archivist can put the bookworm away. That's a neat little uh, little flavor interaction that I enjoy. So I'm doing a very good job of hitting all my uh, lands this game. Uh, well, we didn't get to see it at the PPR, but at least I'm going to get to cast the first one. Um, I cast Approach of the Second Sun. Uh -oh. oh, no! That's going to resolve. So Nice card. I... Uh, put it seventh from the top and gain seven life. Now, how? So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh card, right? Yeah. That's how that works. Six okay. above it in your library. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. Sounds good. Seven. Is it cool if I do the arena thing where I have it leave it face up? Is it cool with you? That's fine with me. Like, okay, because this it, stream it, was your idea, I, so. Am I supposed to obfuscate <laughs> it from 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 your knowledge? Like, well, am I supposed to make it harder for you to count? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the way we play these things at tournaments is you have to put a face down. Um, All right. At the kitchen table, I wouldn't be surprised if more people keep them face up, which I feel like this is kind of we're simulating more of that. Um, yeah. I kind of like I kind of like having it face up, just so that right. you don't have to have the awkward thing of going like, "Wait, where was it?" You know, if someone forgets. Yeah. It's theoretically known information. You should be able to write it down. I should be able to write it down. And we should be able to both know how many cards you've drawn since then. Hmm. Well, hopefully I can start drawing some cards that will draw me cards or or our spells. But in the meantime, it's your turn. I think you meant hopefully you're going to take a whole bunch of damage. <laughs> uh, Is that what you meant? I don't think that's something I need to hope for. I think that's just a thing that's going to happen. Just a thing. Um, yeah. Can we also talk about how much fear and pressure Magecraft puts onto every attack? Yeah, man. Well, I think this Quandrix Pledge, Quandrix Pledge Mage is particularly a, a strong uh, proponent of that. Like, not all the Magecraft yeah. abilities make combat terrifying, but the one where you get plus one, plus one counters for free certainly does. Mm -hmm. I'll go to combat. Yeah. I'm going to try to make the same block. Okay. I want to cast a spell this time. Oh, no. No. No, no. It's Arcane Subtraction. I'll target your creature, I guess. It gives target creature a minus four, minus zero until end of turn, and then I learn. But it's wow. a Magecraft trigger, so I get to make my, my person a little bit bigger. And you still have four toughness in front of this thing. I guess I'll, sorry, I'll yeah. resolve learning before we do combat damage. Fair enough. Maybe I'll cast one more spell, and the trample from Master Symmetrus will matter. Uh, no, I lessons think all are all lessons sorceries. Lessons are yeah. sorceries. No, sorceries. I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least all mine are. I'll just grab another four four. This is. The, <laughs> I have a bunch of different lessons. Like, how many did I get? I got two white ones. I have a green one, and then I have uh, two red ones and three generics. So six. It looks like I have each nine. college. Yeah. It looks like nine each college lessons. has one one lesson that just makes their college's mascot token. Yeah. Okay. So take eight. Yes, I take eight. Post-combat, I'll play a land. 
and cast Elemental Summoning. All right. I get an Elemental Token, and it's back to you. And one more Magecraft trigger as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the Pledge Mage is now the largest creature you have. I have a 5-5, five, five, a 4-4, four, four, a 4-4, four, and a 4-4. Four, four. Right. That okay. stat line. What? Yeah. Oof, uh, All right. Well, I'm going to... It's. <laughs> I did this... I think every game against Cameron at the PPR as well. I'm going to expel okay. that Pledge Mage. Yep. That Quandrix and, Pledge Mage <laughs> will never learn here <laughs> under my watch. I'm not going to allow Quandrix Pledge Mage to graduate, I'm afraid. It's, it's right there yeah. in the constitution of the school. Um, and that's my turn. Go ahead. I'm going to scry one on upkeep. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I could have been doing that. Well, that didn't work out. Oh, well. Actually, no, because I was tapped out. Attack for 12. I take 12. Pass. Oof. I'm going to scry at the end of my turn. All right. <laughs> With the Silver Cool Campus, I have enough mana for that. I'm going to put this land on the bottom. Hmm. Scrying would, uh, I don't think I missed a scry there. I think I was still tapped out from. Um, yeah, throughout the course of the PPR, I think there were some campus scries missed, but I don't know if you've missed yeah. any this game. Um, cool. So expel uh, was the only <laughs> spell I drew this game. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. I kept I kept a four land hand with ageless guardian study break and approach and <laughs> just drew land it was amazing mm. all right that was that was that was wild man your deck just just like curved out beautifully i have a lot of threes and a bunch of learn cards so i can usually get that five mana four four on curve that's a good one i don't think there's much you can do there though right when somebody's deck pops off as hard as nelson's did and it yeah. was just all, it felt like it was all kill or no filler there. There weren't like, sometimes you put those diddly, dirtily uh, two drops and three drops in your deck to sort of, you know, do things on curve. But Nelson was just like, what if I just played nothing but bombs? Mono bombs. Yeah. I mean, I even like that that four or five reach robot for six. Like it's maybe not, yeah. you know, like the, the mana value is maybe not... Um, uh, you know, like a high payoff for six mana, but four or five reach that doesn't care about the colors yeah. you cast it with. Colorless it seems very efficient and limited. Very strong. Because you're just like, well, my color doesn't have anything at that the top end. You're like, haha. <laughs> Probably gonna see a lot of that in limited. Mm hmm I wonder how relevant the the tuck ability is going to be. We have there's the the bookworm or library worm is one graveyard thing. Mm. Well, I guess against um, Lorehold, actually. Lorehold has quite a bit of graveyard synergy. Uh, spirits rebind spirits and right. being able to, in response to targeting something in graveyard, tuck it. I mean, that does hose that strategy pretty well. Yeah. So I'd like to play for the for game two. Any oh, sideboard uh, changes from other players? And uh, I'm speaking not, of sideboards, I'm not sideboarding. have we put our lessons back into our sideboards? Yes, I don't s sleeve my lesson, so I made uh, sure to put that back. But I did shuffle my deck and then draw seven, and only then did I realize that um, that uh, approach to the second sun was still face up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I shuffled one... again, and I have a different seven. Yeah, yeah. One one strike against having it face up discovered there. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, it's not quite I, like so... shuffling your opponent's bob into your deck after an oblivion ring, but you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. We've all both of you ready? Belly, are you ready as well? Uh, just about. I'm, I'm just mulligating now. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and right. Nelly, did okay. you sideboard at all, or are you going to the? Same no, side? I haven't sideboarded yet with this deck. I've been pretty happy with the, the initial forty configuration. Oh, fair Although I, I'm looking forward to maybe grabbing a different lesson, but so far it's just been Dirkwood Boars every time. But yeah, I'm ready. All right. Cool. I am going to start with uh, Silver Cool Campus. Okay. Seems very I familiar will, here. I'll start with an island. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to do a very similar start, uh, which is the Ageless Guardian. Nice. But I have more spells this time, so go ahead. I wonder if it's like a special cream that he's got, or, you know, maybe a, 
a certain certain beauty routine to stay ageless? Mm -hmm. I'd like to find out. We'll talk to that guardian later. I'm going to cast Curate. I'll look at the top two cards in my library. I might put some in my graveyard, and then I'll put the rest back on top in any order. Mm. Well, well. Yeah. And then draw. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. I think I'm fine with all this. We'll just cycle that. Go ahead. So both on top. Eight. Yeah, we just kept them both there. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to play a swamp. Um, I will hit hit for one. It hurts. I'm a 19. And then I will play a silver quill pledge mage. Okay. So this one is a 3 1. And the Magecraft ability is I can give it either flying or lifelink until end of turn. Copy that. Go ahead. Got another island. And I'll cast Frost Trickster and target your Pledge Mage with the trigger. So this is a 2-2 flying. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its control. Is next untap step. Go ahead. All right. Wow, it's a flying Frost Lynx? It's a flying, flying frost. <laughs> yes, it is that thing that you just said, taps. which I can yeah. also say, I'm sure, if I try hard <laughs> enough. Um, oh, I'm going to play one of my favorite new owls from this set. Strixhaven has uh, owls? Yeah, shockingly. Right. Uh, it's, the, what a, it's just a fun name for the card, too. It's the Combat Professor. Oh. So it's a 2-3 flying bird cleric. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus O, oh, and vigilance until end of turn. I also opened one of these, and it made me consider going white just for this card. I like it a lot. That's yeah. so really I'm... strong. Yeah, seems good, so. right? A common? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can target itself. Of course. So. Yeah. yeah. Any target creature, Because it, right? it knows how to do combat. So show, I'm going to move to combat. Everyone, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to move to combat, and I'm going to give it yeah. Ageless Guardian, plus two, plus O, oh, and Vigilance and Attack. I'm going to take two. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Hmm. That's pretty tempting. Thinking. What does that owl with two swords teach? Oh, uh... <laughs> Combat. Turns out he teaches combat. Yeah. All right, I'll cast an Archmage Emeritus and say go. This is a 2-2 nice. two, two human wizard for four mana that says whenever I cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, I draw a card. Not bad. Thanks. I think that is good enough to cast this spell at. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. Uh, I'm going to cast Baleful Mastery. Oh. Okay. For its full cost, which is the cost that doesn't let you draw a card. So I can pay only two mana for this, but if I do, you draw a card, which seems like really defeating the purpose of getting rid of an Archmage Emeritus. <laughs> so, uh, so that guy's exiled. All right. Um, Magecraft, I will give Silver Quill Pledge Mage. That thing has flying anyway, so I'll give the Silver Quill Pledge Mage lifelink. Okay. And then I will move to combat. You got it. And I will give the Ageless Guardian plus one, plus oh, and Vigilance. And then I will attack with all three of these creatures. I'll block the Pledge Mage. All right. So you take four, you take four and I gain three. Sounds good. Go ahead. Baleful Mastery, that's a nice pickup. Yeah. Come on, Commander decks. I'm so afraid of letting people draw cards, but having the, having the option is nice. Like, the, the word that I'm looking for that I can't think of right now. Flexibility. Variable. Flexibility. That's the one. Thank you. It's a planeswalker as well. That seems very strong. Yeah. Let's cast this Ether Helix, returning your combat professor and my frost trickster. Ooh. I can barely even say frost trickster. There we go. Oh, back. wow. So you bounce something to their hand and get something back from your graveyard. Yeah, Dang. we've got a regrow target permanent, so it's a bit of a regrowth or nature spiral, whatever that one. Re recollect, maybe? It was, no, recollect mm -hmm. was just regrowth. Anyways, you return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, and you return any target permanent to its owner's hand. Another powerful like Simic Uncommon. Yeah, also, I, one of the chat comments um, yesterday was, or that I really liked uh, for the PPR, was just, how is that not already the name of a magic card? 
Easter yeah. Helix definitely sounds I like was a card sure from 1998, was. right? <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to replay combat, Professor. Move to combat, pump the Guardian again, and hit you for two. Take two. Go ahead. All right. Quandrix Pledge Mage is back. Joined oh, by okay. its friend, Prismari oh. Pledge Mage. Wow. <laughs> so we've got the grow, the grow Magecraft creature and the 3-3 three, three Orc Wizard, which is normally uh, a wall or a creature with Defender, but Magecraft, it can attack. Go ahead. All right. Not bad. Uh, okay. Another Swamp, which is a little awkward for what I was hoping to do. But maybe this works. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is fine. This will be fine. All right, I'm going to move to combat. It's going to be fine. Uh, the combat professor is going to teach himself a few things and attack you for three. I'm at eight. All right. After combat, I'm going to play Killian. Ink Duelist. Okay. So Killian is a 2-2 with lifelink and menace and says spells you cast that target a creature cost two less to cast. Sounds good. Um, and then... Oh, that's kind of fun. Have we seen this before? This seems really cool and really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Lifelink, uh, Venice, and... What? <laughs> is, is there like a Theros heroic deck we can fuel with this thing? I don't know. It seems pretty sweet. But it's not yeah. just I dig your it. own stuff. It makes your removal cheaper, too. Like, this is absurd. Sure. It's so flexible the way it's it's written. It's templated. Yeah, decent card, definitely. I also like that it plays against Ward. Right. Oh! <laughs> yeah! So I'm going to actually then pass the turn. Okay, I'm tapping. Okay, I've got a forest. And I'll cast this frost trickster we know about. Um, hmm. So... I think I'll tap down Killian. All right. He's going to stay that way for a turn or two. Okay. And then I've got a Mage Duel. Uh, so this is a fight spell. I'd like to target Prismari, Pledge Mage, and Combat Professor. So target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. Then it fights target creature you don't control. And it costs two less to cast if I've cast another spell this turn. Dang, Even the spells great. have Magecraft. Uh, I have an response to that. Mm. Uh, it's it is it is my closing statement, um, which is destroy target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature you do control. Now it costs it's five mana. It costs two less if you do it in your end step, or it costs two less now if you have a Killian. because of Killian. Sure. Okay, so who so are you targeting? The pledge mate. The other half of the fight. The Sure. The, Prismari Pledge Mage? Was the, yeah. Okay. I, I have a Mage Cup figure here on Quantrix Pledge Mage as well. Yes. I just didn't want the fight to happen. And I'll put a plus one, plus one counter on, gosh. Uh, uh, Killian's not going to untap. I think I'm just going to put it on the Ageless Guardian. Back to you. Just get get bigger butts. All right. Cleans. So you have a 2-2 two, two and a 3-3. Three, three. Correct. 2-2 two, two is in the air and the 3-3 three, three is on the ground. Um, I will move to combat and I will give the Ageless Guardian the combat professor's assistance. Okay. And I will attack with 
both. So the Guardian is a 3 5. All right. How many more combat tricks do you have in hand? I don't know. Okay, how many <laughs> I, how many could you have in hand? I have two cards in hand. How I many know. cards do you have in hand? Okay, I also okay. have two cards in hand. Two? Okay, okay. Yeah. I'll double block the creature on the ground. It's a 3 5, right? Uh Yeah, and your pledge mage is a 3 3? Yeah. Okay. I'll order the pledge mage first then. Okay. Damage? I take two. Yes. Okay. And after combat, I will play a Lorehold Pledge Mage who's coming over to spend some time learning how to write. What's this one? Uh, so it's a 2 2 with first strike, and the Magecraft is it gets plus one plus up. Until end of turn. Got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forever. Forever. No, that's it. Go ahead. You think Lorehold Pledge Mages already know how to write so well with those beautiful scrolls they're always repping? Yeah. Maybe this one just wanted to get a little fancier calligraphy. Makes sense. All right, well, the Cogwork Archivist is back, hopefully to hold the fort. Okay, back to you. Yeah. That's the one with Reach. Hmm. I mean... Yeah, that seems like it's holding the fort fairly well. Things we like <laughs> to hear. 4-5 with reach. Yeah, that's going to be... That's probably going to be the the that has reach of the set. <laughs> Certainly there's no clue on the art that it would have reach. It's like inside it's of an underground very building. very tall. There's yeah. that yeah. one... There's a squirrel. There's a random, it's like a 1-1 yeah. squirrel in the set that also inexplicably has reach. And I guess maybe it what? climbed a tree? I have no idea like, why it has reach. It was the first two creatures we played in the PPR. Adam plays a creature that doesn't look like it does flying. And then Ben played a creature that doesn't look like it has reach. It's great. They just stared at each other like, what are you doing here? Like, I don't know. <laughs> That's so here, here we are up at the top of this tree. Um, all right. So I don't have any good attacks. Uh oh. Lucky for you. Things you love. And... I mean, you can definitely push through damage. Okay, more creatures. Yeah, but it lose stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. I'm going to play a Spiteful Squad. So it enters with two plus one plus one counters, uh, and it has Death Touch. Okay. And then when it dies, you can put its counters somewhere else. Okay. Go ahead. Kind of a funky, like, modular thing going on there. That's very neat. Mm -hmm. I just got to check yeah. my learn board here. Oh, yes. A reminder that plan. you can check your sideboard at any time in a game. Just make sure you keep mm -hmm. it separate. You got to keep them separated. It's true. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're adding that to Arena for this. They're adding um, being able to look at your sideboard during the games. Oh, that's that great. That streamer yeah. thing where you just like take a picture of your sideboard on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Or watch your own VOD. I see uh, Bloody watching her own VOD a lot. I like that. Yeah. No, I think you'll be able to do it with uh, if you, you just click on your deck. Uh, and then there was a button on that view to look at your sideboard. So seems fairly intuitive. But yeah, it'll be good to be like, what lessons do I actually have? Hang on. Especially for limited, right? Yeah. I've got the Leyline Invocation. Uh, six mana sorcery, and it just makes a fractal with X plus one plus one counters where X is the number of lands I control. Nice. Back to you. Seems reasonable. I mean, six mana, six, six seems dece. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, it's exciting to want to delay it, maybe until I have ten lands or something, but that's not the way this game's going. Mm. And only a common, so, you know. I mean, maybe this could be in a popper, popper deck. I'm always I love playing any any of the Konamas Reach popper decks. Like there there was one that was just barely playable when I first got into the format years and years ago that used Rolling Thunder to win. But much much tighter, faster, more powerful popper decks have grown have popped up since then. So probably Leyline Invocation is not uh, up to snuff for the format. Ooh. Graham has a red source now. We haven't seen this I all do. game. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. With my life. Uh, 
<laughs> I suggested when you when you asked on Friday, I suggested running a mega entertainment network, and yeah, you, you were like, "No, one. I'm reconsidering it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. All right, I'm gonna move to combat. Oh we're no, gonna, we're gonna. That's try the that. last thing I wanted you to do with your life. We're gonna, we're gonna try to push something through here. Sure, sure. Uh, Combat Professor is gonna pump up on Killian. Okay. And I'm gonna just crunch with all the friends. The big it's crunch. A very interesting okay. attack, yeah. So Killian has three power, and if you cast a spell, yeah, so, so we've got the first strike. Um, so two two death touch. Yep. Three two menace. lifelink menace. Uh, two two first strike. 2-3 flyer. Okay, I think I'm going to block everyone except Killian then. Um, I'll put Cogwork Archivist in front of the Combat Professor. Fractal mm -hmm. Token in front of the Pledge Mage. Here, maybe I can even try to do this so it looks right. Yeah, oh, nice. Yes. Ish. There we go. Yeah, they're not so, quite so far forward. And then, yeah, this this Bird Wizard will block the Death Touch um, Arcbound Worker. All right, so now we I enter have... the combat trick stage or step. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have what one you got from I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out where to throw it for maximum assistance. So I'm at um, six, and Killian has three power right now, and that is unblocked. Yes, but unfortunately, uh, what I have is not a, not a pump spell. Yeah, because there is that so... plus three plus one pump spell in in red. Yeah. Which would do it. That would do it. Um, I guess what I want to do is... Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm going to tap just the red because okay. it's K Killian. Um, and I'm going to cast Heated Debate targeting the Fractal. Works. So Magecraft trigger, this gets three power, so the Fractal will die in first strike. Yeah, you ready to move to that, or...? Yeah, I'm okay. ready to move. Move forward. So um, Combat Professor just dies, your thing doesn't. Spiteful Squad trades with um, the 2-2 two -two Flyer, and Spiteful Squad's going to leave its counters. Uh, I guess on the first striker is probably the best bet. Or maybe no, the Menace Creature three. is the best bet. You Who knows? Three, right? Take Take your time. Either way, actually. Take yes, time. I gain three. Yeah, I gain three. Do you want the first striker or do you want the Menace Creature? I I don't actually know, but I'm gonna put it on there. Okay. I don't know what's I don't know what's actually better, strictly speaking. So maybe it would be better on the Menace Creature. On I the board, it's the Menace to... Creature, right? Yeah. Because like, say be you right. put it on the Menace Creature and I cast nothing, then on your next turn you just attack and I die. If yeah. you put it on the first striker and I cast nothing, you attack and I block your first striker. Yeah. But, but if you want to do it the other way, it's fine. No, I think you're right because this, this yeah. also, what I didn't factor in is that the Pledge Mage also uh, is already lethal if I draw a spell. Yep. Whereas Killian gets no additional power from me casting spells. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay. Me, me or second mate? Sorry, that's it. Pass the turn. I have no cards. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Heated debate was all I had left. And just as a recap, Graham is at 26 after the attack, and Nelson is down to three. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, I've got a pop quiz. All right. Oh, we're yeah. Gonna, we're going to draw a card. All right. And then we're going to learn, and then we're probably going to concede, I think. We could do a <laughs> four drop. This gains me two life. Is that enough? Yeah, you no. need either a removal oh, spell or two blockers to live well, on this okay. board. Uh, so I have a weird sort of out. I have environmental sciences. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'll put that in my hand. I guess I could have looted instead. No, it's fine. This is like an on board. I don't quite die. So let's cast environmental sciences. I gain two life. Mm. And then I search my library for a mountain. I put it uh -huh. in play, and then I pass the turn. And All it's right. five Your life. I'm going to. Yeah, you're gonna scry one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna scry. Five life. I'm not immediately dead to kill him. Uh, I'm gonna bottom this because I don't think it does enough. And 
then we'll go to combat. Yeah. And I will I'll block. swing with both things. I'll attack with both? Uh-oh. I'll, I'll block I, the one oh. I can block. Uh, yes. I got a one, and you gain four? Uh, yeah, because I, I, I misread a card. Oh. It's fine. Oh, did you, did oh, you no! have a, do you have a sorcery in your hand? No, that's it's not exactly it. It's exactly the same card that I thought was an instant during the PPR, oh. too. <laughs> what have you got? Okay, do you want me to concede, or do you want to keep playing? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right, all right. Okay, I so made, are I you going to cast it now, mistake. or no? Okay, do you want to cast uh, it after combat, or no? No, not really. You can't cast it on my turn. I know. Okay, I'm adapting. Yeah. Hmm. Island. Well, I have a couple of decent plays, but let's do this one. It's All Bookworm. Right. Ooh, big guy. Yeah. I gain three life and draw a card. Nice. Pass. All right, let's cry again. Okay. Bottom that. I'm tapped out. All right. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, sorry. Graham should have gained three life there as well. No, four it's life Graham as well. Graham at 30? Four yeah. Life. Yeah, so you yeah. should Graham, I think, 30. is at 30. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the catch, Surge. Um, go ahead. Oof, not dead. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, you wouldn't have been dead either. You would still have been able to play the bookworm, but you wouldn't have the cogwork guy, and I would still have had the pledge mage. Oh, I guess then you would have been dead because I just swing with both. But then you probably would have played your turn differently. This is why you can't completely predict how games are going to go. It's true. We can't always completely predict it. Um, well. Let's see if this works. I've got a mage duel. I'd like to target Bookworm and Killian. Oof. That's Is another that... one of the, that's another one of the fight cards? Yeah, sorry. It's a uh, target creature I control gets plus one plus two until no turn, then it fights target creature I don't control. Yeah. This is a foil. Gain for life. Dang. Totally fine. Gain for life. Yeah. Yeah, I have I have two of these, which is why I went with the student union beatdown name for my deck. It's good, yeah. And then I don't know. You haven't done anything for a little while, so I want to say I'll smash for, what is it, 8, 12. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> and then I think I'll play Rutha, Mercurial Artist. Legendary Whom? creature, Orc Shaman, 1, 4, and I can pay 2 and return it to copy target instrument or sorcery spell I control. So I, I, mean, I could have... Paid five to get a second mage tool, but you only have one creature. Go ahead. All right. Uh, scry at the end of turn. I guess I could have put all the mana into dealing one more point of damage this turn. Draw for turn. Uh, all right. Play a Thunderous Orator. Yes. That's that one that gets all the abilities, right? It gets all, yeah, it gets all the, all okay. the other abilities. Um, how big is Rutha, sorry? One four. Okay. Really impressed with the Orc Prismaris so far. I like both the uh, the Pledge Mage and Rutha. Did I draw all? Yeah, this match I drew all my red cards. So I, I included mm. Rutha because it seems like a cool thing to do and sealed like late game. Maybe you can get more out of your Mage Duels or two Leyline Invocations at eight mana. Seems really good. Um, uh, I'm going to pass the turn. And then also the Heated Debate. All right, well, what game of Nelly's would be complete without a second Frost Trickster coming down here to tap your oh Thunderous boy. Ordor? Yeah. Oof! Oh, no. Smash in for 12 again. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, no. Finally, I have a Kaka Dream Strix. Kaka! I've got a Bird Wizard and a Bird Illusion on the table here. Very nice. Grab okay. overextended. Uh, quick, Wrath of God. Yeah. I'll yep. try. I'm going to The Wrath of Gods it. are coming soon, right? You and I'm Kathleen were sharing sideboards of the PPR, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, oh, that would be would have been cool some turns ago. That doesn't really help. Does that help me now? No, it doesn't, does it? I don't know what I have in here that would help me now. 
but I guess that card is not it. I so think if you cast um, your s approach to the second sun, you're not dead on board. True. Um, oh, that's not terrible. Oh no, maybe I still have exactly lethal through that. Actually, sorry. Um, I'm gonna play. Oh, what am I? Hang on. What do I want to be doing here? What's the best bet? Maybe it's that. Uh, I don't know. Eh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to play one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to play Pillar Drop Rescuer. So it's okay. a two, two flyer. And ETB return target creature card with mana value three or less from graveyard to hand. And I guess we get Killian. Yes, I'll get Killian. Locks and gains life. Good call. Ow, pardon me. Make spells yes, we'll play, play Killian. Um, and then when you cast a spell, spells you cast that target a creature. Cost two less. Okay, then I'm going to play that sorcery. Okay. Uh, on Killian. It's uh, Essence Infusion. Right. I put two plus one plus one counters. Cool. Um, it also gains lifelink until end of turn, but in Killian's case, he's got lifelink all the time. So, Judge, at end of turn, Killian loses lifelink, right? Yes, but then also <laughs> still has it. So, yeah, <laughs> go go ahead. Okay. Hmm. Essence infusion definitely feels like it should be an instant. So I can see why I'd be like, oh yeah, it's a pump spell. Yeah. But I can. I yeah. Can... Sorcery speed pump spells have to be a. A real good, like they need to be riding the Dilu horse level to be uh, to be worth including. But I like that one. Two mana for two counters. It's like a, it's a giant strength. Yeah, but I did exactly the same thing that I did the PPR. Where right. I was like, oh sweet, got this awesome combat trick. Move into combat. Oh, we need to get you a special no. sleeve just for your essence infusions that go. This is a sorcery <laughs> and big bright like red um, just marker. Write it on a note and like slip it into the thing. Yeah. Okay, so. It's time for math. Okay, so you block, probably say you jump Killian on the Archivist, and then that 2-2 two, two blocks my 3-2. Then you take 10, but gain 4, so you're not dead. So that leaves Killian available to eat Rufa instead. Um, but then you take 3 additional damage and go to 1. I think I'm fine with that. Meanwhile, though, I'm at 4. Are you? Is there a block you make where you... Don't lose both of your creatures. Oh, right. If Killian blocks this, then this doesn't kill Killian. Darn it. Okay, so I don't want to just walk into being dead on board. That's not ideal. Let me just double check my math there. Yeah, let me tell you, it, uh, it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Doing math? Or, yeah, walking into being dead on board? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these Done two. that before. Yeah, so block these two. Go to 14. The classic. I win. Oh, no. Take 13, <sighs> right? 9 plus 4. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's walk back that plan then, uh, and instead just attack with these big dummies. No, that doesn't work either because Killian has a menace. Yeah, with the momentum that Nelson had, it's easy to forget that he's at four right now. Because mm -hmm. after the past couple attacks of swinging for twelve over and over, you're like, "Oh yeah, Nelson's got this." You're like, "Wait, if I don't win, yeah. I'm just no. dead on the crackback." No, yeah, it's, no, Graham is in a decent spot too. I like attacking. Sorry, is the orator going to get menace during combat? Uh, yes, if Killian is alive. Right. And lifelink. And yeah. flying. If the pillar drop rescuer is alive. Yeah. If I, okay, if I attack with just these. That's three, the fun part. If I attack with just these ones, what happens? Sorry. No, you're fine. Sometimes math is not only for blockers. Sometimes yeah, right. <laughs> math has to be for attackers or the game ends quickly. No, this, yeah, this works, I think. Because it, it's weird, weirdly, if I don't block or don't attack with Rutha, I get in more damage. It's, magic's such a weird game. Okay. Yeah, because if I just attack with these ones, you can block with just your flyer. But if I attack with this one too, Killian has to block. Because it's like, this is lethal. Okay, we figured it out. Or go to combat. Uh, All right, you're you're yeah. tapped out. Okay, cool. So, yeah, yeah, two flyers and two ground creatures. One of them has trample. 
Okay, so it's a 7-7 seven, seven and a 4-5 on the ground. Yes. And then a 2-2, two, two, and the Dream Strix is how big? Uh, the Dream Strix is a 3-2, and when it dies, I three, learn. Two. So a 2-2 two, two flyer and a 3-2 three, two flyer. Right. Did I do this right? So, right, you were just doing all this math, so let's see here. So if I block the Dream Strix in the air, then I take 2, go to 8, and if I block the... That's... I that's think you have to block... Ground. I think Killian has to block Hardware Archivist, but I could I be wrong. I think you're right. I could be wrong. Um, because that's so it's eleven on the ground. So I have to, yeah, I have to gain life somehow. Right. Because I can't, I can't, I can't not block with Killian. Killian can only block the ground creatures. Blocking the trample creature isn't really. I guess it doesn't really make a difference which one he blocks. Uh, but can I not? Can I not drop with Pillar Drop Rescuer? I gain, if I block the 4-5 with Killian, I go to 14, then I take 7, 10, 12? Seems right. I think that's my best bet. So you could have any number of spells, but I guess, yeah, I guess we'll do that. I guess I'll block the 4-5 yep, with Killian. Yeah, you go okay. to 2 and Killian dies. Yeah. Back to you. All right. Should I scry in my upkeep? Will I love how it's five me? mana, right? Yeah. It's Will been that every time, anyway? every time, unless you have literal nothing, um, it's been like tough to figure out what you're supposed to do, right? I have some spells that might help, but I don't know. It's like, do you want eight mana and any card or three mana and a little bit of advanced knowledge on a card. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I, I have enough that I can leave up one of each color. So, though I've already used one of my red spells, so, but I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna scry my upkeep. Well, I didn't need a swamp, so I guess that's better than nothing. One point to scry? Mm-hmm. So the problem is, So what's Rutha? 1-4. On the ground? Yeah. Okay. So because I have four in the air. So you must have something. And this doesn't actually help. I just want to say so... shout out to Nelson's poker face right now. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. He's giving us nothing. <laughs> nothing. I'm having fun. You guys I'm... having fun? I'm having fun. Oh, I'm going to combat. The order gains flying, and I'm going to attack with both. Yeah, no, I'm dead. I just gone through enough permutations of that oh, combat step there last turn that I didn't want to make everyone watch one anymore. But now I want to go back and do it because I did screw up. So it's like when you make this block, now this isn't lethal anymore. So that attack is wrong, and I think attacking with just oh, the flyers wow. is also wrong because I'm at four. But maybe attacking with just bookworm is wrong. Maybe this is okay. Maybe I could have oh, done this. Oh my goodness! These two block Killian. These two block the other two. Yeah, I could have just attacked with bookworm. But then if Whew. you don't, if, if Nelson, I don't know if Graham has to block anything there, because then no, cause everything has menace, right? Because then he's got two menace creatures oh, right. and the flying top. and menace, yeah. right? But that's okay. I can... and, and life. No, not all of them, but two of them would have right, menace right, and right, life. Right. I can let yeah. the orator through, though, if I block the pillar drop rescuer, or I can block the orator and just trade, because I have four life. I can let one of the flyers hit me. And so oh, as long right, as I have two right, ground right. creatures to block Killian, <laughs> and I can block one flyer, I'm okay. So I'm... academically, mm. no pun intended, that <laughs> yeah. would have been that would have been correct. Uh, in practice, I scryed a land to the bottom and drew a removal spell. Oh! Cool. <laughs> cool. So either was, way, that was a uh, that you could cast. Game. Oh yeah, I guess Killian lets yeah. you cast almost all your spells all the time, right? Yeah. I well, sweet. it's uh, it, yeah, it was a rip apart, which is red white. So okay, yeah. I can't believe I have the mana up for it. you won that game. Like it was your game, <laughs> Graham, and then it was like the pointy arrow advantage just swung so far over to Nelson. Oh. I did get to attack for twelve win. two turns in a row. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I really. Um, I managed to snatch victory from the jaws of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. 
No, is this a good game? I mean, I had I had answers eventually. Yeah, stay alive. That was it a was sweet cool. game. I like that I cast environmental sciences to gain two life and not be dead. That was a cool that was a cool line. line. That was a yeah, very was a good cool line. line. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any sideboards this time? I see both players are head down, and there's cards riffling. <sighs> I don't know. I just like all my this cards. This isn't a reminder so much. to check it, but you know, at a pre-release, you can play any of the cards that you've opened. And I know we joke like, that I... sideboarding is an admission of defeat, but it's an important part of magic. It's an important part of identifying the strengths and weaknesses yeah. of your deck and your opponent's strategy and adjusting accordingly. I mean, that I have good cards in my sideboard, but yeah. I like the cards in my main deck more. Yeah, I do have a combat trick on my sideboard that's like probably pretty good, and maybe the way that my deck shook out, it's the kind of thing that I should run. But mm. I don't know. I've got it's beaming defense. It's a uh, creature gets plus two plus two and hexproof. Hmm. I don't typically, seems, seems, you know, as how a table that? friend, want to give play advice, but that two. one four. I I have so many questions about that one four. <laughs> it's only two mana. It stops the beat down. But not, I don't I, have a lot of two drop creatures, is the thing. I don't have a lot oh, of two drops. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Thing. I think it's like that's excellent against a deck playing like, wait, Inklings Fly. Not even Inklings. Maybe the three two yeah. spirits that the Boros deck makes. But against Nelson, yeah. who seems to have a lot of four power creatures or the guild mages that grow faster. But again, you know, I don't know your whole deck. I don't know your curve. It, it's actually done. I mean, it's done more damage on the Lightning Bolt to Nelson over the, over the games, yeah. right? True. It's definitely in there for curve purposes more than anything else. I could see taking it out when you're on the play. Yeah. I, like, I don't think I'm on the play this game, though, am I? No. But no. Um, okay. you also have a bunch of cards that pump. So, like, if you have a four toughness creature, pump spells get a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Two plus one plus one counters. Yeah. That thing becomes a house. That's true. Hmm. How are we feeling about lessons at this point now? They seem I like them. really good and limited. Pretty like down, really, yeah. really flexible. Nelson's line last game of being able to find a land and gain two life to dodge lethal and stabilize yeah. for a while there was, that was really sweet. heads up thinking. I like All the right. lessons a lot. I'm gonna mulligan, but I wanna show you if the if if, if I was a okay. braver soul, I have forest adventurous impulse. So first turn, mm -hmm. dig for a land, maybe. And then second turn, okay. as long as it's an island, curate, dig for another land. <laughs> and then I have some other spells, two more spells I could cast if I have three mana. But it all has to work out perfectly. So I, I don't know. I always call that. that a trap. It's like when you're playing blue and you have one land, ponder, brainstorm, preordain. You don't have a good hand. You yeah. have the tools to try and build a good hand. But I think you're supposed to mulligan to an actual good hand. Yeah. I think that's correct. I agree. But you can you can tell yourself, oh, I can use my mana. But you're like, but for what? Are you using mana <laughs> I mean, I realize there's an amount win? of... I realize in my current spot, I'm there's an amount of, as your opponent, I encourage you to mulligan. <laughs> but no, I yeah, I agree with Surge. I don't know. You can... This is a problem I find myself in Magic a lot, is just because I'm busy doesn't mean I'm playing right. I think a lot of people can fall into, I don't know if it's a fallacy, right. but into this false thinking that if you're using all of your mana and casting spells, you're you're playing the game optimally. But what are how are those spells, how are those actions actually contributing to your overall game plan and to you winning the game as opposed to just moving a bunch of cards from your hand to your graveyard and turning all your mana sideways? I, like, I got the same uh, hand. Oh, no. How are you doing, Graham? Oh no! I'm I I have a I have a seven. Okay. I like uh, Brian David Marshall talked about um, what he likes to do most with with his decks, uh, which um, if you've ever had the experience of playing Commander against him, you'll you'll understand. Which is uh, card uh, velocity. He refers to it as, which is just he's constantly moving cards around zones. Yep. Like things are going from his hand to the Hi, battlefield or into the graveyard yeah. or from the graveyard to the battlefield and the graveyard to the hand and then for, you know from the library to the graveyard to the hand to the battlefield like it's just he's you know it's it feels like a lot of the powerful nothing right you're just like wow he sure is doing a lot of things but I don't know oh wait I'm dead. Oh right. <laughs> see I often miss that last step. I'll go through yeah. these absolutely convoluted turns. <laughs> And he'd be like, yeah. what happened in this game? Like, well, I drew eight cards, and all the eight cards I drew are also in my graveyard at the end of the turn. I haven't affected the board at all, and I'm tapped out. Go. <laughs> right? 
Yep. A storm count was 12. I don't have any storm payoffs. I don't. <laughs> yep. Look, there's no wrong way to play magic. If you're having fun doing that, you do you. Yeah. Okay, we've got to keep. Speaking of doing you, how are you doing, Nelson? I have five cards, and I'm pretty nervous to pl to be able to win a game. Let's fight. Right. But let's I'm ready to play. Let's find let's out. It. Yeah. Wish let's me luck. It. Good luck, friend. Well, unlike most of the uh, matches at the PPR, this one at least is going to a third game. That's right. Um, oh, my, my first match went to a third game as well. Hmm. All right. Uh, draw. Play a Lorehold Campus. Go ahead. I'm already so jealous. Mountain. Prismari Pledge Mage. Go ahead. Um, swamp. Perfect mana. Go. Quandrix Campus. Go. Planes. And we'll go with... Uh, Callous Blood Mage. That's a good one. 2 1 Vampire Warlock enters the battlefield. I get to choose from three modes, and I'm going to choose Lose One Life and Draw a Card. Sure. Was that your and... promo foil, or is that a pack foil? Uh, it's the promo foil. Nice. Yeah, it's got a cool little, like, 2021 hollow foil stamp in the corner here. It's neat. Go ahead. Island. Archmage Emeritus. Back to you. Not a bad five, Nelly. Not a bad five. We'll see. We'll not see. Not bad at all. I have two cards in my hand. Also, this Archmage Emeritus has not lived long any of the times that it's at the battlefield. No, and it's not going to this time either because okay. it's really good. I'm going to exile it with oh, Baleful okay. Mastery. Uh, but that thing's a 3-3 defender? Yep. All right. That's a big old bout of no attacks. Go ahead. Uh, one quick question oh never mind sorry yeah. it's it's three in a black i thought it for whatever reason it was like one in a black and one in a black i'm wrong ignore me yeah it's it's the way that it's all laid out in the text box is maybe a little 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 eye bending in that way i've got an island go ahead all right oh all right uh okay let's do okay mountain Let's play creatures. Um, I'm going to play a Thunderous Orator. Or cast a Thunderous Orator. Thunder. All right. And then also a Lorehold Pledge Mage. Seems good. Uh, and that's the turn. I'm going to scry one. All righty. Mm. Yeah, that's acceptable. Tap. Draw this. Um, I'll play pop quiz. I will have to tap for this. Probably like that. I'll draw a card, and then I get to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, I like pop quiz a lot. Seems yeah, very I'll straightforward. Go to the learn board here. Um, I think it's time for that one again. Seems right. Sure. Go back to our old favorite, Elemental Summoning. I'll put that in my hand. And play a Prismari Campus. Go ahead. Alrighty. The Prismari Pledge Mage could have attacked there. Oh, right. Uh, okay, I'm going to move to combat. Sounds good. The... Uh, sorry, rewind. Okay. Remix. Not go to combat. No, I'm about to because I was I had this I had this play worked out ahead of time, forgetting that there's a key step which, which is casting this card in my first main. Um, Specter of the Fens. Sure. It's a two-three flyer, uh, and for six mana I can drain for two. Sounds good. Um, now when I move to combat, the Thunderous Orator gains flying. That was the key step. Okay. Uh, it also gains first strike. I will. Because of the Lorehold Pledge Mage. Uh, and it's going to attack for two. I'll take two damage. So many All right. keywords. Go ahead. I'll cast Elemental Summoning. Ah, yes. I get a 4-4. Four, four. Um, and I'll play another Prismari Campus and say go. Okay. Okay. 
third planes. Um, going to go to combat. You got it. And Thunderous Orator gains a bunch of abilities. I'm going to attack with Orator and Spectre. No blocks. All right, four in the air. It hurts. Meanwhile, on the ground, I'm going to play the Spiteful Squad, the Death Touch friends. Go ahead. Is that a common? Yeah. yeah. The card seems yeah, so is, powerful, yeah. too, for limited, like, just Death Touch and moving the counters around. Yeah. Okay, I've got a Forest and a Master Symmetrist. When I picked, I should say, when I selected Silver Quill, it was more for the writing. I didn't realize that canonically they were also kind of a bunch of wieners. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, I'll say go. Graham right. putting the power of air domination on display right here. That is the hope, at least. Except that now the Master Symmetrist is here, and the Master Symmetrist has reach. Another, why does this have reach picture to join yeah. the cadre of... I don't understand what what's so reachy about this. From Well, we don't know the perspective here. They could be really tall. I think really, maybe there's a class really tall. at Strixhaven <laughs> yeah. that's just like disguising your abilities 101, where it's just like, if you have mm -hmm. flying, don't let anyone know. If you have reach, definitely don't let anyone know. Like, what if the perspective <laughs> yeah. of this is a normal person looking up and being like, dang, that is a tall rhino druid? I mean, yeah, that maybe that's what happens once you master symmetry. You get to be as tall as you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? Maybe I should... Uh, eh, no, I think we'll keep that around. All right, I'm going to play a Biblioplex Assistant. Lame. Um when it enters the battlefield, I put an instant or sorcery from my graveyard on top of my library. So I'm going to put Baleful Mastery on top. Seems good. Uh-oh. Got to make way for the flyers. Go ahead. Island. Go. I draw Baleful Mastery. Uh, I'm going to cast Baleful Mastery. Targeting the Master Symmetrist. All right. Um, uh, mage craft, Lorehold Pledge Mage gets plus one, but you have a four four. So I'm going to swing with the flyers. It takes X. Which is six man, or six damage rather. Yes, go ahead. Scry one. I'll cast Frost Trickster. And if I'm able, I'll tap down your 2 3 flying creature. Yes. Back to you. All right. It's a pretty good tempo play. Thanks. Mm. I think it's probably too late, but it's, it's not an irrelevant play, so I kept it on top. Hmm. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, I'm going to play this Mage Hunter. So it's a 3-4 horror. I don't know why these they let these things run around. Hmm. Uh, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they lose one life. That seems good. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, I'll go to combat. Sure. Um, and I'll attack with the Biblioplex Assistant. Maybe I should be more aggressive there, but I'm just going to attack with the 2 1 flyer. I'll block. All right. And I'm going to play an eager first year, which is a 2 2 and Magecraft. It gets plus 1 plus 0. Go ahead. I'll scry one. Sure, I'll leave that on top. It's two turns in a row, leaving on top. Not bad. Mm. Uh, 
I'll cast Ether Helix to put your 2-3 um, Flyer uh, back into your hand, and I'll yep. return my Frost Drifter. All right. I lose a life from your Mage Hunter. Yes. Is so. it a drain, or is it just a ping? Just, just lose one life. Mm. Yeah. I'll cast Frost Trickster. All right. I'll tap down the 2-2 um, two, two Death Touch. Yeah. And I'll say go. Okie dokie. I never got to I never got to cast this at the at the PPR, so uh -oh. I'm gonna do it now just because it's fun. Uh I'm gonna cast Elite Spellbinder. Nice. So P V D D R wants to look at your hand. I have an island in my hand. Ah. You may exile a non land card. Alright, well, carry on then. Okay. <laughs> Having that island. I have an island in my hand you didn't know about. Paulo knows yeah. everything. Um That was definitely not the right card to play. <laughs> but I it was really cool. To play it. It I mean, was it's, cool. a cool. it's a flying creature. Like, it, yeah, that's true. I don't know if playing the wrong card here, as long as you play a card, is going to matter. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, what I'm, the... I actually missed. I actually missed a, missed something last turn that I'm just now seeing. So I'm going to move to combat. Uh, the thunderous orator gains flying and first strike, and I'm going to attack with it. I forgot about the first strike. Oh, okay. I did two. I'll take two. Yeah. I should. Uh, yeah. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, I should have attacked with it last turn, but I forgot that I still have other creatures. <laughs> also against Death Touch. If yeah, you're I was going to say, quick uh, quick keyword check on that right now. Yeah, flying first strike, Death Touch. I'll first strike, Death Touch is very creatures. powerful. Yep. This isn't good enough. Draw. Perfect. I'll play this island. I'll say go. All right. Going back to your elite spellbinder play. That's what the PPR is about, though. Is here's a chance yeah. to play these cards. Nobody knows what's going on. Let's uh, let's see what they all do. Let's have some fun. Uh, I'm gonna move to combat, and I'm gonna make big crunch. Slam. Who's big crunch? Oh, you attack with all your creatures? Yeah, I attack with everything. Look at uh, this We guy. have ourselves make a, a flunge. Make it a, a word flunge. for attacking with everyone that. The internet fell in love with, and it got on a T-shirt, and then he got tired of it, and needed to make more words or attacking with everyone. Wait, I quick, quick, one. more, more slogans. I bet you didn't even do the math because math is for blockers, right? Uh, I don't want to do the get math. That one on a shirt one of these days. I'll block three of your creatures. Am I alive? Boom! I'm making the math for the attackers. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Which three? I guess All the right, biggest kids. ones. Don't mulligan to five and then flood out. Oh, that's rough. It's okay. You did. You didn't draw any spells game one. Remember? So yeah. you, you got to win the game where we both threw spells. It's all good. Well played, I think there's another good showing where Graham yeah. put a lot of pressure either way. I mean, much like Nelson in game one, it's hard to beat a deck when it is absolutely popping off. And I think we had an opportunity in that three-game series to really see what both decks got to do. We had a pretty yeah. one-sided game one, a pretty one-sided game three, and a very, very tight and very competitive game two. Altogether yeah, a good game series. Game two was super fun, yeah. 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 Any closing really thoughts time. from you two? Uh, I wish I kept doing the combat math during my turn <laughs> on game, game two. <laughs> no, that's it. Well, thank you so much for watching the pre pre release bonus content. Hope you had a good time watching it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.